Hello class. Um, I want to spend a few minutes talking about tax research and specifically uh, the idea that we are using Google. Uh, you may hear your faculty, other teachers lament that everybody just Googles everything and expects to find the answer. Uh, and that's really true. Uh, even even tax professionals are start are using Google to find answers, but the key is how you do so. So what I want to do is tr uh, try to spend some time showing you how uh, you might use Google to find the information you need, uh, but make sure you find the right information so that you can authoritatively talk to clients about tax issues because the initial search is probably not going to generate the answer that's going to be sufficient for our tax research and tax memo purposes. So let's say for instance the term in the first chapter that comes up is filing status called head of household. So you go to Google and you type in head of household and the first thing you need to realize is that Google uh, puts things at the top based on what somebody paid for uh, as well as what is the most likely uh, place that people want to go. So they have an algorithm uh, that's supposed to determine what the most likely thing you want to know and, and take you that. And for the most part, you're going to find uh, for something this broad uh, some decent sources. But the point is though this is TurboTax, uh, here's the IRS, uh, Intuit, eFile. I mean, these are not uh, bogus sources, but they are not original sources where you can uh, necessarily count on for the research you need to do. They may give you a, a definition. It may even be the right definition. Uh, but what we're trying to do is find the actual uh, source documents, the original sources where that we can count on uh, and, and use in with a client. So these would be helpful. And you can see the Wikipedia is usually in here, uh, which we, we're going to take with a grain of salt, especially with tax purposes, because no one's editing that. Um, but Internal Revenue Service is probably not a bad place to, to, to look first. Uh, you see sometimes it, it doesn't uh, uh, give you a whole lot of detail. Uh, the publication uh, is a, also a helpful explanation for the IRS, so we've gotten there directly. You get to do the same thing on the IRS website. Uh, but uh, these publications are not... Um, original sources, their explanations, they can be helpful, but what we really need is original sources. Now some on the IRS website uh, you can find some of the original sources. They're not very convenient, but under research guidance, under tax pros, you can um, find the Internal Revenue Code, which actually doesn't take you, it takes you to the uh, Cornell University Law School. Uh, to find that uh, treasury tax regulations and the Internal Revenue Bulletin where all the other things are published. These are not real easy to search. The law, the Cornell Law, law School is pretty, pretty good. But the others, you kind of have to know what you're looking for and then you can go find it, the actual thing. So you're going to have to find your reference from some other source typically uh, to be able to find that. If you know close, like for instance in the in the, the you know the section number for the code that it's in, then it's not hard to find the regulations that deal with that. So that's one area, what one click you could have done. And then I see of course with Google is you just uh, back back out uh, and you're back to where you started. Now you realize you're getting some good stuff, but not the, really the the key that you need uh, in in your search here. 
So it's not hard to change the search, of course, and say, all right, let's see if we can find the actual internal revenue code. Uh, just add that to the end, see if we'll, we can get a little more directly. And you see now Google finds you the actual uh, Cornell Lie Library. This is the actual internal revenue code. Uh, and the definition of here of a surviving spouse, um, and then further down the definition of a head of household, which is what we were thinking about. Now, if you look at this, you see that it refers to other sections of the code. This is how sections are referred to in the code. And you, if it's hyperlinked, obviously you can go right to it. Uh, subsections and paragraphs. That's how we find things in the code. All of this other stuff up here is uh, kind, kind of ex extra. If you know the section, uh, whenever we're talking about taxes, we don't need to tell everybody that we're doing all these other pieces. We can go, so we, right now we're in section two, but it makes a lot of reference to section 152, which is where the, the rules having to do with uh, dependents are. So you see that the topics are, are different for each section. So that's sometimes a way you can find directly in the law without even, uh, you could have just gone right to the Cornell Law Library and searched for that, but you may not know what code section to look for. Um, you see that there's also the same references to the IRS and so forth. Um, and it, as you go down here, you see that some are more, you might say, authoritative, like a law dictionary. Uh, you know, here's another reference to the code. This is sending you to section 152. Uh, now, what if you were looking for more uh, detail, maybe court cases? See what happens there. And again, Google does a good job of finding a court case, uh, a recent court case that has to do with a head of household. Now, it's only looking for the, the, the topic. And so this is an original source. This is how you would cite it. This is the citation for this court case. And of course, you'd have to look at the opinion and see if it uh, gives you the information that you need uh, and just an idea of how to find it. Now, you can also find tax court cases on the U.S. tax court uh, website, um, but as you can see, this finds this just as easily. Uh, notice a few things about how they refer to Whenever you, you'll see that they use the proper citations uh, in this, the way that we want to do it, when we cite other cases, uh, here's a case, that's how you cite a case, tax court. Uh, this is how you cite the section of the code. Here's other cases, and they do underline them uh, to make sure that uh, you can find them. Uh, so. What happens in a case, they refer to other cases. So what we have to do is check to see what the courts have said about some of the definitions. Uh, and of course, in some of these situations, there are more than one issue. So this situation has to do with not just um, head of household, um, but definition of marriage in this case, uh, child tax credit, things like that. So some of it, a good chunk of when you look at a case, is not going to be relevant. So that will help you. Google can help you find that original court cases sometimes. Uh, obviously, the more recent, the, the better it, it will be at finding that. Okay, Older things, it will have a little harder time. But uh, uh, it's getting better all the time. Okay, When you see something that is... Uh, for instance, uh, this idea of journal of accountancy or tax advisor or some other uh, more uh, professional 
publication, they will almost always have, now they are not, general accountancy is not a uh, original source. This is still somebody else saying what, what the court, the tax law is, uh, but they will always tell you where they got the information. So you can, so that you're, come to here, you see this, oh, okay, if I want to actually see what this court case is, this is how I do it. Okay, this is the reference. This I can find that now. Look that up on um, the tax court website uh, or on CCH uh, if, if, if need be. So you'll see that you can kind of tell the difference between a professional publication and something that's just explaining it like quick uh, uh, into it or tax, you know, TurboTax. They don't give you an awful lot, very often, the citation as to where it can be found. Uh, they just give their opinion. Uh, these professional, written by CPAs and that, that sort of thing, are going to almost always give you the uh, reference to the cases or to the sections or to the regulations that they are using. So. That's why they can be very valuable. But again, in this case, we would want to actually take the to the next step and look at this case. Uh, that's how you want to deal with uh, a client is to have actually seen the case itself uh, and tell them how it apply it would apply to them. So uh, that's. That's how we might use Google. Again, it's not gonna just return you the answer. It may give you lots of some good sources, but you're, it's a good way to start and you can keep refining your search to find uh, more authoritative and original sources that you can then cite in your, in, in your uh, tax memos. So, good luck with your searches.